Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This tutorial would be on Proposition 1 of Book 7. Now, in this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate the method to discover whether or not two numbers are prime to one another. Now, before we begin, what does it mean for two numbers to be prime to one another? Is that their largest common divisor is 1. That's the definition of two things being prime to one another. So, what we do is we start with two unequal numbers, and we subtract the smaller from the larger continuously until we can't do it anymore. Then we switch roles and we repeat, and we switch roles and we repeat, and so on until we have one number that is a multiple of the other. The best way to show this is through an example. So we're going to start with AB is equal to 145 and CD equal to 63. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 63 from the larger and do it again. And now we have 19. Well, we can no longer subtract 63 from 19. So 19 now is the smaller number. So AF is equal to 19. And we're going to take the larger number, which is 63, and subtract 19 from it. So 63 minus 19 is 44. 44 minus 19 is 25. 25 minus 19 is 6. And we cannot subtract 19 from 6, so again we switch roles. So CG is 6, and we are going to sub subtract it from the larger number, which is AF. So we do it again, 19 minus 6 is 13, 13 minus 6 is 7, 7 minus 6 is 1. And now we've ended up with the number 1, and because we've ended up with the number 1, this proposition is stating that 145 and 63 are prime to one another. So how do we prove that this method works? So this is what we're doing. We're starting with BF is equal to CD plus CD, however many we need, and I'm writing it in this format. Now, I want to be clear that Euclid does makes a distinction between one number measuring an other and two numbers multiplying each other. Originally, when I was designing these tutorials, I had summation signs here, but it gets really ugly and hard to see. So I know this is not the proper notation, but imagine that what this is actually see, saying is that BF is equal to the sum of CDs from i equals 1 to a. So I will be using this dot notation incorrectly for the entirety of this book 7. Alright, so bf is equal to the summation of cd, leaving af, which is less than cd, and then dg will be equal to the sum of af, leaving cg as the remainder, and likewise cg will be summing up to af, and eventually AH is equal to 1. So this is essentially what we did in the example just moments ago. This is our starting hypothesis, and now we want to demonstrate that AB is prime to CD. And we're going to do this by assuming that it's not prime. So if it's not prime, then AB is equal to some multiple of e, cd is also equal to some multiple of e, and e is not equal to 1. All right, remember this is the definition of it being not prime to one another. Since e measures cd, so cd is equal to e plus e plus e plus e, and BF is equal to CD, which means it's equal to QE plus QE plus E measures BF. So all of this to say is that since E measures CD and CD measures BF, E also measures BF. 
but E also measures AB. That was our original statement here. So AB is measured by E and BF is measured by E, which means that AF, which is AB minus EF, so plugging in the numbers, is also measured by E. I found it interesting when I first went through this proposition that as far as I can tell, Euclid does not provide any proof for these statements. He seems to take it as a matter of fact that if one thing measures another and then you subtract the two things, the remainder is also measured. So we have AF is measured by E. And continuing along, since AF is measured by E and AF also measures DG, then DG is also measured by E. But CD is measured by E, and if DG is measured by E, then since CG is equal to CD minus GE, again, basic arithmetic, we have that CG is measured by E. And again, we get that FH is measured by E, since CG measures FH. And therefore AH, which is AF, which is measured by E, minus FH, which is measured by E, is also measured by E. So all of this, here is the crux. We have that AH is measured by E. Well, let's look at what we started with. We said that AH is equal to 1, and we said that E was not equal to 1, and we're also saying that AH is measured by E. So it is impossible for AH to be measured by E, since E is greater than 1, and AH is equal to 1. So here is our contradiction. So we've just demonstrated that there is no number E not equal to 1 that satisfies AB equals AB being measured by E and CD being measured by E. So here is our, um, this statement here provides the contradiction. So if this is not true, then this can never happen. And therefore there is no number E that is greater than 1 that measures AB and CD. And that is the definition of relatively prime.